Wow. Welcome to Split! So after leaving Zadar a few days ago, I spent a few days soaking up the sun in a town south of Split called Podstrana. More on Podstrana later on in this video. Today I decided to visit Split City and see what it has to offer. From the highway, the city of Split looked just like any modern city, with tall buildings and a vibrant atmosphere. However, Split has an interesting appeal with seawater basically all around it. Split is the second largest city in Croatia, so traffic congestions in the summer are frequent but manageable. Additionally, Split has the largest soccer stadium in the country, so if you plan a weekend visit to Split, check and make sure there is no major soccer game in town. Trying to navigate from one end of town to another during a big game can be a challenge. Learn from my mistake. I didn't do my homework, so I had to learn the hard way. But all that aside, my time in Split was enjoyable and relaxing. My favorite thing to do when I travel is to explore narrow historical streets and I just let myself get lost in the atmosphere. And Split has plenty of that to offer. I literally got lost in a maze of cobbled streets, but I didn't worry too much as I enjoyed every single moment exploring the town and satisfying my curiosity. One word of advice though, if you park your car somewhere, make sure you know 100% where it is. Get an address, drop a pin, text or email the location to yourself. The streets do look alike and it is easy to get lost. After getting my daily dose of walking, I headed over to one of the most visited historical sites in Split and that is none other than the Diocletian's Palace. The Diocletian's Palace area is the beating heart of Split. It is a favorite hangout spot for both locals and visitors. This palace was built in the early 4th century AD as a retirement house for the Roman Emperor Diocletian. When Rome failed, the palace was abandoned but it opened up the entire space for locals to settle in and build their homes within the walls of the palace. This palace appears in ruins today, but at its prime it was a giant engineering marvel. These hallways are simply the basement part of the palace and they extend to every direction. Nowadays these hallways are used as a shopping area. In front of us is the Cathedral of St. Dominus. It is composed of three different sections of different ages. The main part is Emperor Diocletian's mausoleum, which dates back to the 3rd century. In the 17th century, a choir was added to the eastern side of the mausoleum. The bell tower was built in the 12th century. However, the tower was fully restored in 1908, which affected the original Romanesque sculptures. This is the vestibule. This was an entryway and a point of intersection connecting multiple living quarters in the palace. It is an impressive structure, even by today's standards. Historians believe that the walls were once covered with marble slabs and intricate mosaics. If you look up, you can see what appears to be a missing dome. It is not known when the dome collapsed or what caused it to collapse. Today, this vestibule is used for Klapa music performances, so if you plan a visit to Split, check and see if such a performance will be taking place during your stay. Klapa music is a perfect mix of ancient, traditional and modern. If you want, you can pay to gain access to various historical monuments inside the palace such as the Palace Underground, Split Bell Tower and Jupiter Temple. You can also pay for a guide tour, a city guided tour on an electric car or a rickshaw. I decided to choose none of that, instead I enjoyed a cup of coffee and people watching which is my second favorite thing to do when I travel. By the way, my favorite thing to do is enjoying local food. After 
I got enough of people watching, I headed over to one of the most popular and fancy locations on the port area and enjoyed a few drinks while watching the sunset before heading back to my bed and breakfast in Podstrana. Now about the town of Podstrana that I mentioned earlier in this video. During my travel, I always avoid staying in the city center unless I have no other choice. City centers tend to be overpriced and crowded. I usually look for any towns with lodging near the city, especially areas where I have access to taxis, trains or within a short driving distance. The town of Podstrana meets all my travel standards during my visit to Split. It is less than 8 miles away from Split and offers plenty of outstanding lodging options and the beaches are excellent. I am in Podstrana Beach, which is about 10 miles from Split and Split is right there. I found one of the best bed and breakfast places 5 minutes away from one of Podstrana's beaches. When I said 5 minutes to the beach from my bed and breakfast, that's my bed and breakfast. And the beach is down there. I am not paid to talk about this property, but I feel like bed and breakfast places that go above and beyond are very rare. Villa Senator is one of the few bed and breakfasts that went above and beyond. This place is clean, renovated and well maintained. The owners felt like family from the first 5 minutes of check-in. We sat outside and chatted for hours and I just felt home. I even extended my stay for another day. The icing on the cake was the calm and being close to everything I wanted. A beach, great food on the beach and even a grocery store. All in one. I am leaving Split right now and I am on my way to Dubrovnik. See you there!